What is up, hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack all of our Web3 and gaming education. Now, if you guys are brand new here, I'm the CEO of a company called Sandstorm. Now, a lot of you have asked for updates on this, and we've been heads down grinding and building. Now, what I want to do in this video is unpack the next stage of Sandstorm. And I also want to talk about two potential competitors of the product. Now, a lot of people over the last two years since Sandstorm launched have asked questions around the tooling that we've developed for different builders, what's coming, and a lot of different questions around the analytics. Over the last probably 12 months or so, we have supercharged the analytics and it is coming out in a short period of time in beta. A lot of people are testing around with the platform right now and we're really excited to roll this out. So in this video, what I wanna do is go through two other options that game developers and publishers can use for analytics. And I also wanna talk about why Sandstorm is the number one. Obviously, I think that there is a lot of things that we're doing that a lot of people aren't, and we are taking a very new approach. I'm really excited to unpack this and let you guys know that there's not much out there in terms of content around game analytics. So I'm gonna be leaving the link to all three platforms in the description below so you guys can do your own research and figure out which one you guys think is the best. Ultimately, I believe Sandstorm is the best because we empower game publishers and developers to make smarter data-driven decisions and ultimately increase their engagement and drive more revenue. And I think that that is just the key hook, line, and sinker for why we are going to storm into the market and win the gaming analytics space. Now, first and foremost, I wanna talk about a couple of the key functionalities that Sandstorm is offering developers. We track user behavior, in-game purchases, which help you drive more revenue, of course, remove bottlenecks. We help with game design issues with these analytics because you're basically plugging and playing which events you choose to track within your game. And of course, user segmentation overall, we're really just trying to drive more engagement. Question is, is how do you find power users? And a lot of people are blind when it comes to this. And I am amazed by the lack of analytics in the game environment space. And when we rolled out V1 earlier this year in Q1, it was crazy to hear the response from people saying, there's no way to track all of these different events that have taken place within my game environment. And it's remarkable to me that many, many players have not entered this arena. So we're really excited to show you guys what we've been building and the proprietary tech that we have that thousands of people have been playing with for many, many, many months now. So really eager to show you guys that. The next up is our analytics for publishers that connects data sources all into one area. So one simple dashboard that allow you to really understand what ads are doing for you, what different types of channels are driving the most engaged users, and an end-to-end -end view of the funnel. Because multi-channel attribution in marketing is a fancy word for saying, I need to know where the best traffic is coming from that yields the most revenue, the most engaged users, everything. I need to know that, and I need to be able to see end-to-end -end why that channel is the best and why I need to invest more in Facebook, YouTube, whatever it may be, Twitch, it, it's all up to you. And what we're doing here is we're really just trying to figure out what the most valuable single source of truth is with data. And through analytics, we can do that. The next one is behavioral analytics automations. This is where if I enter into your game, I go onto a certain part of your website to read your documentation as a developer, I can trigger a email to you. I can trigger a notification to you as you go onto the website and you're reading around documentation, it says like, hey, check this out. This is gonna help you really deploy more in-game assets. I, you've been looking around on this part of the website, you've been looking into this documentation and you can trigger based on people's behavior, notifications and emails. This is a huge value that I have not seen anyone else approaching in this way. And I believe that this is the future of how you can really increase your retention within game environments. Let's say I go into a game, an event triggers and an email goes out to them saying, hey, this is actually an exclusive item in the environment that you were in. You may have missed it, check this out drive more revenue, increase that engagement through the notification. So really love this aspect to it. Now, the last one is a surprise. I wanna leave this one for a couple months now when it's done and it is on our roadmap. So for people that wanna really understand it, definitely reach out to us. Uh, it is a key, key driver. It's a big trend right now. Everyone has a strategy around it, hint, hint. And there's a lot of really cool things that we're gonna be doing to help more non-technical people get involved in letting them know what types of things they can do and should do with data that they're given. So really excited for that. I can't really tell too much about that, but ultimately I'm going to talk about two more complimentary features here. The hiring and production feature on Sandstorm, as you guys know it today, as many of you know, 
we have the talent marketplace. There's 3,000 verified developers and game developers and engineers on there that can literally help you deploy all sorts of assets, all sorts of experiences, everything. So for a team that's really small, you have a deadline, you need to scale up, get some on-demand game developers, 3D designers, everything from the marketplace that supports your game. And you can go on there and deploy an RFP style uh, system where you put a proposal up, people can bid on it and you can accept it. And it is a very powerful tool. There are people spending tens of thousands of dollars a month on the on-demand marketplace right now. So really, really valuable for game developers, especially big studios are on there so they can help you turn around really quickly, decrease those timelines and increase uh, that speed to launch. And next up we have infrastructure. So one thing that's really overlooked is enabling content creators to stream. And this was something that we got a lot of feedback on early on when we said we wanna build infrastructure tools for game developers. And this was one that bubbled all the way to the top. Everybody wanted something to empower content creators to get in their game and really enable live streams. So we provide hosting servers for developers and publishers on the platform itself, which is a first. It complements the analytics and of course the hiring and production. And this is a really, really powerful feature that we have a lot of influencers using right now. They're currently in beta, they're playing around with it. They're figuring out what type of monetization they can do with in-game advertising, where they have a live stream piped through with running ads. They're live streaming from the experiences themselves. There's a lot of really cool things that VTubers and content creators are gonna be doing through this over the next 12 months. So infrastructure, hiring and production with on-demand on uh, marketplace. And then of course we have the data and analytics, all of it wraps together. And we have of course our marketing and distribution to help support new, new developers. All the small studios, all the indie studios, we wanna support you. We wanna get you out there. We wanna get you in front of our community of 100,000 plus game developers all across our channels. And I think that it's really key to know that the amount of influencers and gaming creators that are in our community is like a network effect where if you get your new game shared, it is going to be pushed by a lot of these other creators that are on Sandstorm, that are on the leaderboard, that are playing around on the marketplace, that are using the tooling. They wanna help. They wanna support new indie devs and studios and everything that are deploying new experiences and new games. So ultimately, this is a key ingredient, having that cross-promotion aspect for support to help new developers get out there, get the word out, and get some user acquisition early uh, because it is really important for users to come in, beat up your game, play around with it and everything. Now, with pricing, I'm gonna be going over pricing with the other two as well. Pricing, we have a pay-as-you-go model now. We just launched it for all of our beta users where based on the events, it's all usage-based and it starts at 25 bucks a month. Basically, you get on there and the amount of uh, events that are taking place is going to determine how much you pay. This is really intended for startups, small studios, indie developers that want to go on, they want to get in for a very low barrier, have that powerful analytics base and get access to all of this tooling and more features coming. But ultimately we have those event-based plans and MTU, monthly tracked users plans. It's more of a, a traditional analytics tracking. That's not really as much for the gaming side, but a lot of people like it. Uh, so that is the base plan that people get in on. And then we have the 199 silver plan, the 299 a month. And then we have the $1,000 a month or $999 a month plan. This one packs a huge punch. We have game developers already utilizing this plan because it has an extremely valuable high touch account management platform for it. So literally when people need help with projects on the on-demand talent marketplace, we have an account manager that helps them. If they need help with co-promotion, we help them. There's a lot of support involved in that $1,000 a month plan. And we have, that is our most popular plan right now with large developers. Studios and indie, indie developers are focused on the pro, that middle tier plan. But ultimately the $1,000 a month plan is where we're seeing the most traction. Most people are interested in getting a lot of help, a lot of support. And this is something that I believe is truly innovative and disruptive for the entire space where you have an enterprise level plan available for these smaller studios and developers, uh, even big, small. And I believe that that enterprise plan is by far and away the biggest innovation in this space in probably the last 10 years because we are helping people track what they need to be tracking and driving more engagement. All right, next up, we have gameanalytics.com. This is probably the head-to-head -head number one competitor for Sandstorm. A lot of people have DM'd me about this, asking, hey, 
how is this different? And game analytics is great. It's fantastic. It's a great resource for people to use. I believe 60,000 publishers use it. And I really love the way that they've structured it. It is owned by a company out of Singapore, I believe. And it uh, was acquired many years ago uh, by this larger company. And they're really going after a lot of the game studios to do an entire game portfolio, which is a very clever approach where they want to have a studio that's developing five titles over the next two, three years. And they want to be able to get uh, all those titles on their, their analytics platform and have those events pumping through and they can kind of charge by that. So I love the, the platform. It is a kind of a, a drop into the, the platform itself. If you sign up for it right now, you literally will just be, you know, trying to figure it out on your own. And this is something that we're trying to disrupt. We're trying to really help people handhold, get them on track what they need to track and let them know how, uh, how to do analytics, literally just how to, how to handle powerful analytics. So that's something that we're really differentiating ourselves with, but ultimately game analytics has custom dashboards. You know, you can compare data across the different dimensions. You can run a B test and monitor reports. Uh, you can manage all your paid campaigns, which is really a key component here because a lot of teams will do separate analytics. They'll do CRO, your conversion rate optimization, which is where a lot of, you know, Sandstorm and game analytics and the next one that I'm going to talk about sit on the conversion rate optimization. But you also have people that are doing proactive ad attribution and campaigns there, uh, which is a whole different beast. But ultimately, it can roll up into both of these categories here where you can track everything under one. Sandstorm does it, Game Analytics does it, and it is a really powerful way of monitoring what channel works to bring more revenue and more engaged users. The next one is for their uh, in-game purchases. So you want to make sure that you're driving in-game engagement. You want to remove all the bottlenecks that you can through A-B testing, drive the more in-game engagement on items, tools, all that. You need to make sure that you're doing that. And that's something that Game Analytics does really well, is making sure that you're tracking how events take place, whether they're revenue driving events or you know unlocking more events through certain events, so like bottleneck uh, style crux events. So I think there's a lot of value to that. This is a really uh, powerful and useful platform. So a lot of people compare it to Google Analytics 4, uh, but a little bit deeper. And I think it's a, it's a very valuable platform for sure. They've been around for a while and I'm excited to compete in the, the gaming space. Their three pricing tiers, I believe they have a, a free option, but they have $9.99 a month uh, or $99 a month, $2.99 a month, just like Sandstorm, and then $7.49 a month as their top tier plan. A lot of add-ons get baked in. So what you wanna do when you're signing up for analytics is make sure that add-ons uh, aren't going over, over the top because if you get in on a free plan and it's, it's uncapped, you're, you're gonna have to uh, basically do a ton of add-ons. So that is Game Analytics, really cool platform. The next one and last one is called Delta DNA. It was acquired by Unity. Now, Unity, the game engine, is extremely well known. They're currently in quite the controversy situation where they released a new payment plan effectively for installs uh, that is quite, quite controversial. So it is a, a limit of fees to 4% of games revenue for customers making over a million dollars. And this was really controversial because it's basically taxing the top performers on Unity, the top, the top developers. So they will charge per install and it will cap at the 4% for games making over a million, but uh, they, they don't know if there's gonna be a cap on the fees for games making under the million. So it seems that there's uh, you know, gonna be some retroactive applying the fees that's really controversial about that threshold is really controversial. And on top of that, what, what the issue here is, is that instead of Unity using uh, you know, any, any sort of non-proprietary tech or like a third party, they are using this software to track the game install. So it will rely on users to self-report. It's like an honor system based. So I think that this is a really, really controversial time for Unity and it is uh, gonna be tricky. So the Delta DNA platform that they acquired, now it's just referred to as Unity Analytics, is uh, you know it empowers studios to understand their game performance and player behaviors, capture insights using pre-built dashboards and visualizations powered by reliable real-time data. So it sounds very similar to uh, you know game analytics and Sandstorm. 
You can build and execute queries, plot results in different types of visualizations and export your data programs to Microsoft Excel, Tableau, or open offices. Funnels are easy to visualize, same as game analytics and Sandstorm and the user flow and progression through your game. Now, this is a really key part here because as the game engine, there is an advantage to that where you have everything right there and fully native integration with their analytics uh, is pretty key. So optimizing player experience during onboarding and diagnose issues like level of dis difficulty. This is a really, really important one. So this is free plans as well as pay as you go plans. And the pay as you go is quite interesting because they have, uh, you know, their MTU style plans, and then they also have their sort of bandwidth or usage based plans. And they're, they're at all different price per event and price per user uh, price points. So 0 0.00125 per MAU uh, is, is their sort of uh, monthly active user tracking. And then you have all sorts of, of different backend ways of, of charging. So they have their cloud storage data. They have uh, a lot of really interesting parts to it, but ultimately they're going to be charging by the active users and the usage. Uh, so I think it's a it's a cool a cool model. I really like that they acquired a startup to make this work. And I think that when we do you know fully release out of beta at Sandstorm, I'm eager to see uh, how the Unity Gaming Services compares and of course we're going to be integrating with unreal engine and other game engines as well and this is just one of them so the other one i believe with unreal engine is called fanalytics that's an integration there and there's just not really good central hubs for analytics uh, which is brutal and i don't understand why but there are other people that are talking about this because it is a huge industry and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and with thousands of developers on our platform already, we are eager to very much uh, get, get this out there. So if you guys want to learn more about Sandstorm, Game Analytics, and Unity Analytics, leave a comment below. Reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you if you're a game developer, or publisher, or just gamer in general. We want to get your take on the product. It is releasing very soon, and we're hyped about it. We're super eager to get it in the hands of everybody here. And that is it for this episode. I hope you like it. It's a quick overview of like the three top game analytics platforms out there for developers and publishers. And I hope you guys enjoyed the high level. Leave me a comment and I will see you here on the next episode of Hack Crypto.